Hi, this is Jack again. We're uh, going to do a small little clinic today about bracing. You know, everybody says optional bracing. Well, optional bracing, there is no optional bracing. You need to brace almost everything that you're going to build. Um, we're going to do it to prevent warping when you put weathering on it or whether you're going to let it sit in your basement. You want to make it so it's strong and won't warp at any time. All right, I'm going to talk about um, bracing walls first. Um, what I want you to do is make sure you look at the kit instructions. Um, there's some, sometimes they show you exactly where they want the bracing to go. And then there's some gaps in different places. They're made so when the corners go together, they're going to fit together right. So if you look on this particular one, this happens to be downtown garage, HO. We've got gaps on the corners here. It tells you here you want a quarter inch gap. But then you're going to run into gaps like the one that's right here, where a, a, a wall or a, or a ceiling or a roof goes in that you need that gap. So you want to go by the directions for the bracing that uh, they show you in the kit. Um, you can alter them a little if you have to later on. You can trim them up. You've got to be careful. But it's best to go right by the, the uh, directions of the first place. So after you've gone over the, uh, the layout of the bracing, um, you want to make, su make sure that all the bracing is also the same size. Um, Depending upon which scale you're using, it will depend upon the size of the bracing. Um, for HO, we use 530 seconds, but there was also times when we use a smaller bracing for a smaller application where we don't have quite as much room. So if you take our standard bracing, comes like this, this is what it looks like, and then you're going to cut it to your sizes and uh, glue it right onto your uh, wall sections. The best way to do is clamp it in with a uh, yellow glue and let them dry, let them dry good before you uh, start playing around with them. And then you can move on to the next step. Talking about clamps, um, they're essential, I think, when you're putting these together. Um, it's gonna make your glue dry a little quicker too, because if you can clamp them tight together, the glue cures a little bit better. We have a bunch of little clamps here. Um, these little small little spring clamps, you can get almost anywhere, like Harbor Freight sells them for $20 for five, I mean 20 for $5. Um, they come with a couple of big ones in it. Then there's some larger ones, a little stronger ones. Um, Art likes these, uh, I think they're document clips, like you can buy them, they make great clamps. And then you can get a bar clamp like this um, that works out pretty well. The, way I, the, the reason I like these bar clamps is because right here is a 90 degree. If I'm going to try to keep a, a building square, I can slide this in and, and get it tight and still see, keep it square. Let's talk about um, our bracing and how we're going to cut our bracing. Um, if you're working in like a end scale, um, a single razor blade or, or a, uh, a knife, a number 11 blade will do. You can probably cut them very easily. When you get into the larger scales, HO and O, you're going to either have to use a razor saw, which is a very fine tooth blade, or if you get into some of the bigger stuff, you can actually get down to use either a band saw or a chop saw. Um, it's the easiest way sometimes when that bracing gets much larger. Um, if you want to cut multiple ones, if you want to have like six, I have four here, I want them all the same size. What I did is I bundled together with a flat end, I'll mark where I want them to cut, then I'll cut the whole bundle and they'll all be exactly the same size. So that's a quick way to do a bunch of them. An additional piece to bracing is I like to use gussets. Um, that keeps my corners square. It makes a, for a very strong laterally um, piece. In this piece, you can see we, we've added some gussets here in the corners and the bracing here, which makes this uh, piece of stonework that goes on the bottom of the foundation extremely strong. And I know it's square. So what you do is take some of, this is mat board, same stuff they use for doing pictures. Um, and I'll cut it in rectangles like this, real simple. Just make sure that this is a right, right angle. Sometimes, you're going to have to cut one that goes in a corner, but it has a corner post. So you're going to cut them so they look like that. And then it's just going to go in the corner like this. And you're going to have to, like this one, we put little supports in to hold it. And now it's very strong. Now, if I had a post, say we had a post in here like this, then if I put my gusset in, so I'm looking at the one that we have the cutout, it would go in like that and we'll go around the gusset. Now that makes that very, very strong. This is a very strong structure. If you look at this building, this little building here, you can see what we did with it. I put one here and I put one here and now I know the building is square and it's 
it's very strong this way. So very simple gussets. They don't cost you much. I mean, if anything, they're white glued in. A little extra bracing, and that's all you need to do. I'm gonna talk quick about uh, placing bracing on a wall. If my bracing is gonna to come to the very end of the wall, and I'm gonna have it go to the end of the wall so when my other piece goes into it, I'm going to take it, I'm gonna stand it up on a flat surface, I'm gonna put my glue on it, I'm gonna take this piece, and I'm gonna push it in real tight like that. And once it's tight and with the glue on it, I can then hold it for a second, it'll kind of set up a little bit, I'll put my clamps on either end, and when I'm done, these two pieces will be perfectly lined up, not sticking out or sticking in. They're going to keep it nice and flat, and it's easier to give it a little sand and you're done. So that's a quick way to do them on the corners. Yeah, after you've uh, applied the piece to the corner, the, the edge of the wall, um, what you want to do is make sure that these two surfaces, your bracing and your wall, are completely flat. And the easiest way to do it is either with a sanding stick where you run it across this way a couple times and get it smooth, or you can take a regular sheet on a flat piece. That's why I like to work on glass. And I'll just run it back and forth a couple times. And I'll find out that I'll get it nice and flat. So there's no difference between this, uh, the bracing piece and the wall. Well, that's kind of a quick overview on, on bracing. Uh, that's not all er everything, but it's a it's couple of hints we've, we've been able to do and tricks to do it. Um, go by your directions. Look at your directions in your in your uh for your particular kit. Uh, there's no rule that you can't add more bracing. I always add more bracing. I like bracing around my bottom, especially if I'm going to glue it down to a deck or something like that. So don't worry about adding more bracing. You can use material that you have around. Um, just glue it on and, and butter it really smooth as you can and make it, make it look good from the inside. I like to paint the inside of my houses black anyway, so it kind of hides it all. So that's what we're talking about today is just adding bracing. Bracing is not an option, remember, you must have it, because if not, if it doesn't warp when you put your liquid on it, it could warp later in the basement if you have any kind of moisture at all. So that's for today's little tips and hints, and I'm glad to see you later. So long.